Welcome back to The Boys in the Iceberg, a podcast where we watch Avatar The Last Airbender. As always, I'm Caleb Bader. But today, we have a very special guest on the podcast. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Harley Davis! All right, guys, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. I'm, just, I'm only human. I'm back after two weeks. Can we can we get the guy to the studio? Is that yeah, let's get him out? All right, thank you everybody. Yeah, we're back. Uh, but was Boys in the Iceberg again? The original Boys in the Iceberg. Thank you uh, for my stand-in last week, Elijah. Very special thanks to him. Yes, uh, could not have done it without you, Elijah. <laughs> last minute thing. Yeah, really pulled it together. Made an excellent podcast last week. But let's talk about uh, let's talk about this week's episodes. We have the Blue Spirit. That's yeah, that's the first one. That's, that's episode, episode thirteen. All right. What do you, uh, what do you, what's your original your initial thought of the episode? Um, I remember this episode uh, very fondly. Because it's a really cool episode, I would say. I, I, I love the Blue Spirit, in all honesty. The Blue Spirit, the, the, the whole episode, the Blue uh, Spirit Harley, title. Why don't you marry him? I, I'm talking about the episode right now, but I will get to the character in a second. But the whole episode is very well, uh, very well thought out. And uh, it even has a little uh, surprise ending. The whole M. Night Shyamalan, what a twist. We're not going to get into that right now. Spoilers. But... Uh, but the Blue Spirit is actually just... And, and Harley, how dare you bring up in that Shyamalan <laughs> in this podcast? <laughs> like, he doesn't have any connection to this at all. He doesn't. Let's let's get past that. But, uh, yeah, the Blue Spirit is actually this uh, this dual sword wielding. It's actually like one sword yeah, split Yeah, it's really cool because it's like the hilt is split down the middle and there's two blades. So you mm-hmm. can use it as one sword or use it as two. Yeah, I, really, I love, the I love same, those swords. the same scabbard. But, uh, so the Blue Spirit comes out of nowhere... To uh to uh in, what is it spot he's spying on Commander Zhao. Yeah, the first time we see him, Commander Zhao is talking with I guess it's it looks like sort of a warden or like a commander of this kind army of. base, and he's requesting these uh, troops who are like these the U- really the good Yuan archers. archers yeah. so they're called. They're very precise. They're world renowned. They did the whole Robin Hood thing where he split the arrow and split the arrow again in Which half. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It's a waste of arrows to be honest. Yeah, and the f- the first guy we see actually notches up four arrows and shoots. Four different targets. Yeah, which is, I'm going to say physically impossible. I haven't YouTubed enough aerial tutorial videos to see. I've only shot my bow a couple times, to be honest. Uh-huh. So, I, I, don't think, I don't think you could do it like that. I think it's physically impossible. He's got some pretty cool makeup on. He so. does. They they look like uh, they look like Apache warriors. To be honest, yeah, that, I think that's what's really cool. Of. But uh, the the Yuan archers, very uh, elite archers, and Commander Zhao is talking to. We're going to call him the warden of this. I don't. Know, I think I would say commander. Com- we're going to call him the the individual commander of this uh, this. Uh, segment this whatever base army, platoon uh, yeah whatever it is but uh so he ta- he's talking about the uh the air their avatar and me and caleb were actually talking about how uh, i think that the uh commander Zhao at this moment is a fanatic for the avatar like nobody else believes the avatar is a thing and the uh, fire lord has put uh commander Zhao on this path to go get the avatar like he has put so many other people onto the avatar's path and commander Zhao was like hey i've seen him you guys have not seen him so to the other people who have not seen him yeah. you know seeing is believing to them <coughs> Excuse me. He's a fanatic. Yeah, they actually bring that up um, a little bit later in the episode when two people from the Earth Kingdom are sort of watching the road coming into the village and they're sort of hidden. And they get the, uh, the they're scroll. Like a, they're like a little foxhole thing. Yeah, they get they get a scroll that has a full picture of Aang, which I don't know how they got that. <laughs> very, um, good, very good artists. Yeah, and it's got some descriptions of the Avatar. And they're like, oh, this is just like something that they made up. They st- I, th- I still don't think they believe necessarily that the Avatar's back. But then they then they blow the little the little horn, which sounds like the introduction to the show Survivor. Yeah, yeah so then then Aang <laughs> runs up, yeah, and they they blow this horn that I guess alerts the uh, the warriors. Do you want archers? But why why is Aang running? You ask because he actually has to. So- Sokka and Katara are very sick, and uh, well, Sokka is very sick, and Katara is just not getting sick. Mm-hmm. So he has to go uh, find this lady who has she's like, like a herbalist. Yeah, she's like a herbologist, and she uh, has uh, all these plants and stuff. Obviously, that's what herbology is. And uh, he's trying to find a cure for or a treatment for uh, the, his sick comrades. Yeah, the the lady up there, the uh, the herbologist, if you will, um, she's like already working on this concoction. When Aang gets up there, and he's like, "Hey, my friends are sick. You need to help me right now." And she's like, "Yeah, no, you're so fine. Fu- it's okay. Your friends are gonna be fine." And she's looking around for these herbs, and he's like, "Okay, well, that's good. She's making up this concoction that's gonna cure my friends of their illness." So Aang actually grabs the bowl out of her hand, and he's like, oh, thank you, all right, bye. And she's like, wait a minute, no, this is my food for my kitty cat. Yeah, she has a cat up there. I forget the cat's name. It's like I don't know, Yuki or something like that. Yeah, she says at one point that they're all alone 
And so she has gone a little bit crazy. Now she has super long hair too. That's the only thing I noticed about her. Super long hair. Her hair was like down to the, like her knees. I I didn't notice that. Like I I ignored everything she said because I was too busy staring at her long hair. She's got this cool greenhouse that she's in though. I didn't I didn't. It's pretty that. cool. Like it's it's on the outside wall. It's like lined by trees and stuff like that. And uh-huh. there's the d- desk in front with the pow- plotted plant. God bless it. Yeah, there's the potted like, plants. There's pathways through and got like these different plots of uh, like grass and stuff growing that she just has a whole bunch of things. I aspire to have a greenhouse like that one day. Really? Really? You have a, a little bit of green thumb, huh? I actually have a black thumb. It will kill anything, but planting it would be fun. Okay, and yeah. then watching it wither away. <laughs> watching it die. <laughs> Almost sit, immediately. As I sit on the bench that I put in front of my garden watching my plants But the benches rot. will be nice that I make because okay, I yeah. make good benches. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, so he eventually she tells him, hey, there's these frogs. Frozen frogs, mind you. Yeah, they have to be frozen for some reason. I don't know. That's a strange thing. She says that, that when they thaw... So the, apparently you're supposed to get these frozen frogs from a swamp. Say that ten times fast. That's going to be a very cold swamp. He goes in there. I don't. Yeah, does he wear shoes? Uh, yeah, I think he. I think he wears some sort of shoes. Um, actually, I'm not. I'm not so sure right now. No, he wears those those knee high like slipper sock thingies. Oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking of the next episode where they were actually in the uh, fortune teller's place. Spoilers. Fortune teller's place, and they weren't wearing shoes at all. Uh, I guess being barefoot is a spoiler. Sorry, fans. Yeah, all five of you. So. Yeah, he's in this this like swamp area, and there's some like ice on the top of the swamp, and apparently, I don't know how these frogs are frozen. Well, I mean, they're I don't know because I don't know if you've ever been in a, in, a, in like a creek or a river. I almost said creek back to my roots, but uh, a creek or a river. But uh, when your feet are under there, it's really cold, and when you put your feet under the the bed of the water, it's also really cold. So it's already frozen. Perhaps when the, the frogs go underneath the actual uh, what is it, the sedimentary or whatever that is, underneath the actual uh, the water. And the, the dirt that's there, I think they might actually be cold enough to freeze over. Because you said it, there was a thin uh, glaze of ice on there. It doesn't look like he's, like, digging, like, down in the... He does just, he's stuff just picking stuff there. up. So, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really make that much sense. And he grabs, he, like, five of them. <laughs> he could just, like, freeze them. Yeah, maybe. But, uh, so, then he gets attacked by the uh, the Yuan yeah, archers. Yeah, he's searching for them, and then he sees, like, some arrows coming at him. Yeah, and they, they actually pin his left arm to a log with, like, five different arrows. Well, uh, yeah, at first I think it starts... Wait, where did it start off? Because I seem to remember... Or, no, it's not when he's in the uh, the swamp. It's up and he's on dry land because his uh, leg gets pinned oh, yeah, down yeah, to the yeah. ground. And he can't get away and they're shooting arrows and he's, like, airbending the arrows He away. creates a giant uh, like air orb over him and then he pushes yeah. all the arrows away as they shoot this bar- barrage of arrows. And he's he's a little bit naive at the first at the first time when the arrow shot at him because he picks the arrow up and is like, Hey, you guys <laughs> drop this. I think you guys You want it this. back? And so, but they yeah they chase him down and he I think he he might lead them down the swamp because he needs to get these frogs because he's still concerned about Katar and, and he's, run, he's running away from the archers uh huh and so they're chasing at him and they're like they're swinging through trees uh, all uh Kingdom of the Crystal Skull yeah they're shoot, actually shooting arrows with ropes on them yeah into trees <clears throat> excuse me shooting arrows with ropes on them into the trees and swinging on them like Tarzan and or like the, the little monkeys from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, yeah, and they're moving through the jungle at a pretty good clip, and uh, so Aang's running away from him fast, but he still has to get all these these uh, frogs, and he gets uh, shot in the arm, or not in the arm, but the cloth, the, the clothes uh, for his uh, sleeve, and it's pinned up to a tree, and he's trying to get away, and then they pin him up with his uh, this right arm, and then I guess for overkill, they shoot a net at him. He's well, already stuck there. Yeah, well, if you look, I, I think the net's a good callback to the, the jet episode, because Aang tries to uh, airbend the net away, and the air just goes through, which I don't think that would happen. The air goes through the giant holes in the net, and then it encases them anyways. Yeah, so, they're, they're probably just being, they're taking precautions. Because maybe they just knew that would happen, yeah. yeah. But, uh, These are the elite. They are, pretty, uh, they are pretty serious, because it actually shows, I like the detail that it puts into them actually being very precise. Because they drop like five arrows into the side of his, not, not his actually arm. Like, they don't even hit yeah, him at all. Yeah, it's all at it's, once. It's cloth. It's like pop, 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 pop. So and then it goes to the next arm, pop, 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 pop. What it really showcases is how their ability to work in a team, too, because they know where everyone's going to shoot their arrow, and they don't say anything. They're yeah, they're, very, they're quiet the entire time. They look, just look menacing. They look like uh, that guy from the last uh, Mohicans. He's insane. But uh, so he airbends and waterbends. Yeah, he does. He does do a little. He freezes a uh, shield up in front of him. Yeah, he, he actually visually shows us that he can freeze, um, freeze water. So we're going to come back to that here in a minute. We're going to make a callback. But uh, so he gets captured, 
and then he gets taken over by uh, which is now Admiral Zhao because he had a promotion earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, they sent a hawk. The Fire Nation sent a hawk to uh, the the base. Admiral Zhao is or Commander Zhao is now Admiral Zhao. Very important guy, I guess. So uh, they capture him, and the Blue Spirit comes and breaks Aang out. And uh, after they after he goes to get these frogs, and so he has these frogs in his pocket, and uh, he start the frogs start uh, thawing out. Yeah, and uh, running away, which we talked about. We were like, hey, we just saw him create a giant yeah, wall just, of ice. He just made ice. He could totally just freeze. He these could frogs. probably just refreeze these frogs and put them back in his pockets. So why is he freaking out? And then the blue the blue spirit comes, breaks him out. They start leaving. It's this huge escape scenario, actually not not well planned out at all by either one of them. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if there necessarily was a plan. No, it was just hey, let's get to the. Yeah, so they're doing all this crazy stuff, and they're like fighting, and they actually sort of their fighting styles mesh. Like when when Aang's in trouble, the blue spirit's there with his swords, and he's really good with those swords. Yeah, what I what I want to talk about is actually um, when you first see the, uh, the there's three people outside of the door of the, the dungeon that Aang, that Aang is in mm-hmm. and when they go down the hallway and they take a 90 to the right and uh, one guy goes down there and he gets his butt kicked immediately. He's done. They can't see what's yeah, happening. So the other two go to investigate corridor. and you see flames shoot out the, the way that they just came from, the way back to the forest. You're like, okay, maybe the guy they're fighting, they're fighting is a firebender. We don't know. Mm-hmm. And so when they get out, um, they end up, they try to escape or jump over the wall like five times. They finally get over it with these ridiculous ladders. And, uh, or, um, I, they, 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 no, they don't get no, over it. He, he throws, he throws, uh, um, the blue spirit over with, uh, with airbending, I think, isn't it? No, but they don't get over the wall, the outside wall. They get over like one of the walls, and they get over like two. To, they get two over two of the walls. Yeah, but then they're trying to There's like three walls. They're trying to like walk on these ladders to like get them over, but they end up not. They almost um, get onto the last, the outside wall, and then fall down right in front of the doors. Yeah, then what happens? I guess I missed that. Well, yeah, so they fall down because they're trying to like grab on. They almost get it, but then they fall down, and Commander Zhao comes out, or Admiral Zhao. Sorry, Admiral Zhao. No, no disrespect for Admiral Zhao. No disrespect. I don't like that guy. Um, he comes out and says, "Hey, I need the Avatar alive. So hold your fire, literally." Okay. Then the Blue Spirit puts the swords up the Avatar's neck, threatens Avatar's life, and they're like, "Hey, hey, open the door, let him go." Just yeah, let him go. But he's got a plan, Admiral Zhao. He he's does. always got a plan. He's probably my favorite character in the series. I hate him. Zuko's my favorite, but he's got these Yuan archers on uh, standby as as per usual, and so he backs out, and they're probably about, I would say. A quarter of a mile away from the, the yeah, third wall far. by now. And uh, they're standing up in the tower, which is, I would say, in, in the middle of the third wall. So I would say they're about probably at least half a mile or three quarters of a mile away from this guy mm-hmm. shooting the arrow. And he shoots the Blue Spirit right in the face. Yeah, But like, the Blue Spirit has a mask on. It's, he's not, like, killing this guy. Which uh, Admiral Zhao says, uh, knock, the, uh, knock the Blue Spirit out. I want to take him in alive to the yeah. Fire Lord. And I just want to say, how did those archers know that his helmet would stop an arrow? It could have been a plastic helmet and just right in his yeah, face. Well, some, some cheap no, it Halloween. It could have been a plastic helmet because they didn't have plastic. You think it was all the, the, the ceramic stuff? I don't know exactly. It was probably like steel because ceramics th- would have broken. Well, I think – I guess it's under spoiler territory. But later on in the series, they uh, they go to a carnival, and I think they all have plastic masks, don't they? Are they those plastic? No, they would not have plastic. Plastic would not have been invented. You're going to say plastic country. does not exist at all, but they can move Earth with their thoughts. Yeah. That's insane. You today. think fortune tellers don't exist, but they can airbend? No, fortune tellers exist. They're just – yeah, bleep words. No. Okay. So to, to all you, to, to our one psychic fan, or unless all of our fans are psychic, I'm really sorry. Our, all of the people listening to this firmly believe in psychics. Well, I'm very sorry for all of you people. Um, okay. So, uh, so at at this point, the archers have knocked uh, the blue spirit out, and the they're sending people out to go retrieve him and the avatar. But Aang swirls up some dust so they can't see exactly where they're at, and at and while he's doing that. He goes over and takes the mask off. Well, he the mask's removed slightly, and he sees yeah. he sees this this remnant of a scar on the face. Oh, a scar! You a say a scar? I say. I wonder who that could be. So he removes the mask all the way to reveal none other than Zuko. Boom! Yes, Prince Zuko is the Blue Spirit. So not only is he a very cool firebender, he's also very proficient with sword. Mm-hmm. He's like I said, my favorite character. So. Ends up uh, Zuko or Aang ends up taking away Zuko to yeah, you know he, life a life for a life. He about thing. leaving him there for a li- just a split second because he's the bad guy. Yeah, but he did just save him, so he takes him off into the forest. A life for a life. So he takes him off, and they're sitting there. He's waiting for Zuko to wake up, and he's talking about how a uh, hundred years ago he says, "I miss all my friends from a hundred years ago because that's what sucks about being so old." And he goes, "I wonder if in another life, if we grew up together, we would be friends. Do you think so?" And then Zuko just kind of looks at him, and Aang looks at Zuko. And then he immediately attacks him. Yeah, he's very. And then Aang flies off. Not having that. No, which which sucks because I love Zuko and uh, I I don't know he's just very very angsty, broody. I need my honor back kind of character. Yeah, um, 
But I think it really works in this episode because even though he's very hateful of the Avatar, he still risks his life to go in and save him from Admiral Zhao, even though theoretically they're, they'd be going to the same place. I would have been like, I would have been like, yeah, we could be best friends. Come with me to my father's yeah. place. Let's have dinner at my house. You'll catch more <laughs> flies with honey than you will with vinegar. <laughs> yeah, why didn't he just be like, hey, yeah, we should be friends now. I like, I love you, man. <laughs> and then, like, come on to my ship. <laughs> they just bro out. Just yeah, all right. Like, I got, hey, Dad, look who I met for dinner. I got a sick game of pie show going on <laughs> in my ship if you want to come hang out for a little bit. If you met my super awesome uh, Uncle Iroh, he's uh, very, uh, very awesome. Uh, that's a little redundant. Sorry, I, I meant to say philosophical uncle, not awesome uncle. My bad. I mean, he is he's both of those things. He's awesomely philosophical or philosophically awesome. Yeah. Take a pick, kids. So then, yeah, after Zuko attacks Aang, he uh, runs off. But Zuko kind of, uh, he, he just kind of lets Anna, Anakin, he, he just kind of lets Aang go. That'd be a cool crossover, Star Wars yeah. and Last Airbender. <laughs> you were my brother, Aang. <laughs> I loved you. You were supposed to bring balance to the Fire Nation. <laughs> Not leave it in water. No, um, sorry. So, uh, um, anyway, so he kind of just lets him go. Like, he's the only one in the forest right now with Aang. Like, they could have this gigantic duel. I feel like Dave, I th- I feel like Dave Filoni missed the great opportunity there of him having a giant don't duel. Don't bring up Dave Filoni. I would I bring up Dave Filoni. I don't want to hear him. I hear we about just him reference anymore. Star Wars, but I can't bring up Dave Filoni. No, absolutely not. I'm going to. No, okay. So, I think that sort of the reason that Zuko didn't fight Aang was because he'd just been knocked out cold. And he was still he, a little bit loopy. He immediately stands up and shoots fire at Aang's face, and Aang just jumps into the trees, which I also have a little bit of... Little he's, bit got a, he's got a concussion, and he's got a reflex where he shoots fire, but he can't walk. He can't, like, run. He stood straight up. Yeah, he stands up. Is it later on in the series we see him firebend jets out of his hand, and he flies? No, that's not him. I'm pretty sure he does it once. Does he once. do it? I don't know. Spoilers. Probably his feet. It's, yeah, pre- okay, so what was your beef with Aang now? Okay, the whole, um, he has this staff, but he basically just flies around like a god anyways, regardless of the staff. Sometimes, no, he like hovers a couple times, but I don't think he actually ever flies no, without he, it. he sprints like a madman. Like, yeah. If you ever played either any of the Battlefront games, or I guess Battlefront 2, where you're any of the Jedi and you can just, hold on, not a word from you. Save it for your Star Wars podcast. <laughs> when you hold down the uh, the sprint button and they fly forward through the map, that's basically what Aang's doing. He's like a force wielder. He's he's pretty. He's, airbending is basically force wielding. No, it's not. Except not at for all. You, you can't uh, change people's minds. He's only so. emotion. Or he's manipulating air currents, not so the using force does. You manip- you manipulate stuff. Let's not sure. talk about the midichlorians. You, yeah, let's not talk about Star Wars at all, Harley. You, <laughs> but you I love created Star Wars. this. Have you seen my room? We're going back to Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> and Anakin: The Last Airbender. And it, no. Okay, absolutely not. No crossovers. Okay. So, anyways, so yeah, let's let's go. I feel like he should have fought him. But uh, I just think that it wasn't it wasn't in the cards for them right now because he just got a concussion. For he took an arrow to the face. <laughs> when was the last time you took an arrow to the face? Uh, you can't say ever. Actually, took exactly. a board to the face one time. I don't care about that. Y- you asked about stuff. Not about a not about face. a board. Okay, so yeah, moving on. <laughs> Harley, uh, Aang gets back to Katara and Sokka, and they're out of it almost as much as Zuko was. But they don't have a concussion. Not even close to as how much Zuko is. Um, so they're Aang, so much farther above that. Aang takes what the uh, the the herb master, what, the herb master, herb. the herb master, uh, and puts the frogs. Which how does the herb master know about curing disease with frogs? I don't know. Maybe she's trying to be. She's an herb. She's an herbologist. Maybe she's experimenting with other things, other uh, excrements, excrements, or sec- secretions <laughs> from <laughs> other. Things other than plants, just you know, c- concoctions. Uh, I feel like there should have been like a doctor's visit and then like a diagnosis, but that's she's neither, an old lady. How that's gonna neither get there? here. Aang flew there. That's neither here nor there. Super force powers. That's neither here nor there. I think it's what, there. All that matters is that Katara and Sokka are now healed, and we can move on to the next episode. I don't know. There's there's a little bit of, uh, back to them not being uh, healed all the way before they got healed. Um, there's a little bit way before that when uh, Katara's talking to Momo. And she's saying, Momo, I need you to go down to the river oh, yeah, and, and fill this pouch with we water. We get a little bit of Momo POV in this episode. And he sits there, and it's it's all green and dark. And she's like, <laughs> Momo, do you got that? Then he goes, all right. And just grabs and the pouch the and flies off and I shows up with a rat it. later. Yeah. So he did not. He did not get <laughs> that. Didn't get it. But uh, anyways, uh, what's, uh, we got we got trivia for this. We got uh, a little bit of trivia for this trivia? episode. What's, um, who's our first trivia giver? Uh, well... Me, I will be giving the trivia. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I was thinking of Q&A, so, my bad. <laughs> Zhao's speech implies that in the Fire Nation, 
both men and women can be in the army. So the Fire Nation is, uh, for all its flaws, a very uh, progressive nation. How many women have we seen though in the Fire Nation? I well, mean, we we get we just see the masks, Zula, but that's it. We but just, they're, but they're, they're, they're all, all covered up. I guess it's... Wait, are you saying that men and women can't have a similar build? I'm saying that it's very unlikely. Uh, yeah, probably. But there are... Are, <laughs> are there taller and shorter Fire Nation? I guess there are shorter men and there are taller women, but I'm saying that uh, they're not all going to be Gwendolyn and Christie of Game of Thrones with their... With their uh, what are you saying about Gwendolyn and Christie? She just wears that armor that doesn't uh, show her sexual sexuality at all, and I like that. I like sexuality? That so women are just sexual creatures now, Harley? Uh, basically. No. No, <laughs> wow, just yeah, throw me yeah. under the bus, man. Uh, I just want to establish that. I just You don't really see all any any woman like creatures because we've we've seen well, so we, women are creatures now listen we're all creatures on god's earth but uh, so we we see though later on in the series like ty lee she is clearly a woman like it's and she's 14 well yeah you but think that they would they're also not wearing armor and then they're smashed i don't think that the the creators of the show got into too much of it yeah like, but most most these are just throwaway characters yeah no, but mm-hmm. most most shows will uh, uh designate the women and the men in like the army stuff like and that. it also says but i like the anonymity you're it right. also says that both men and women can be in the army that does not mean that women choose to be in the army that's fair we do yes. only ever get like azula uh which, which is into. one of the cooler characters in the series well we <laughs> she's really cool she's very very uh very mentally disturbed character but uh what's our next piece of trivia caleb uh, yeah, okay, so the next piece of trivia, uh, the Sungi horn, or the horn that sounds like the intro to Survivor. It does. Uh, is played whenever Prince Zuko switches to his blue spirit alter ego. The instrument used for the sound effect is the duduk, which the, the Sungi what? horn is based on. Spell that, please. D-U-D-K. So I guess this D- D-U-D-U-K. I guess this horn is different from the one we heard. This is another one that's sort of in the background that's not really diegetic. That's not a word I'm familiar with. That means that uh, the music is heard in the world and not uh, from a score or soundtrack. Okay, so your vocabulary six are a little bit more uh, diverse than mine. Okay, uh, this is also the first episode where a character gets sick, which is not really... That's a great piece of trivia. trivia. I, I re- relate with that because I am quite possibly sick right now. So thank you for that little piece of trivia. <laughs> Whoever posted that to the fandom wiki... Um, but <laughs> what's our next piece of trivia, Caleb? Uh, yeah, so the next piece of trivia is actually from the Avatar Extras bonus commentary. Uh, Which we probably should watch. Yeah, I don't know if we... We might have it. I'll, I'll look into that. Because it might give us a little more insight. Uh-huh. And uh, one of the commentary bubbles states that the episode was originally called The Red Spirit, and the mask was red. Uh, during some of the airings of the episode, the title is mistakenly given as the Red Spirit and still appears as so on program guides and several broadcasting networks. I like the Blue Spirit, though, because it's like... Because the Fire Nation, obviously, their color is red. You know, red, orange, that whole uh, That's probably what they're going spectrum. for with the Red Spirit. But then when they do Blue, it's like, hey, he's, it's got, no, position. he's got no affiliation with the Fire Nation whatsoever because he's blue. He's what you think. You're like, he's black and blue. He's fine. And, uh, well, not fine. He's... Yeah. Bruised. <laughs> Bruised. <laughs> Like, yeah, anyways, so you're like, okay, he's got no affiliation with the Fire Nation. I think it's the cool, uh, you know, the, the um, like he's opposite of what they are with collars. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a visual representation of what he is. It's it's more of a subconscious thing. Like, you don't notice it unless we point it out to you. But you're like, oh, I guess I, I did feel that way. He had no affiliation with the Fire Nation. He was just some lone vigilante, like the Batman of the Avatar, which is cool. I still like the uh, Blue Spirit. And I, I love how we, we actually introduced those swords to Zuko, too. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but... Uh, He's really good with those swords. Like when did he? Oh, yeah. When did he learn to? Um, I think. Yeah, I think it might explain later in the series. Spoilers. It might. But uh, not spoilers. Yeah, he's he's really good with them because he's using them um, more as a defensive weapon, deflecting arrows and spears than yes. actually using it as a, an offensive weapon. Like he's pulling spears, like he's cutting that together, and like pulling it together with his arm. He's like pulling spears back and cutting them in half, and he's jumping up spears and stuff like that, and he's deflecting arrows, and he's uh, and then he finally uses it to threaten Aang, but he never actually like kills anybody with him. Mm-hmm. I feel like he killed one dude though. He threw that guy over the wall. That dude's dead. Oh yeah, yeah. He didn't survive that. <laughs> All right, um, let's go on to the next episode. Well, actually, we've got a couple of comments here. I really from, want to talk about the next episode. From the wiki. Well, you're going to have to wait. Oh, man. He's killing me, guys. He's killing me. Um, uh, for The first one comes from a, a fandom user, Anonymous, as is a running theme. And it <laughs> says, uh, COD Black Ops meets ATLA. That is, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops meets Avatar The Last Airbender. Well, thank you for that. Uh, and then we got a, another piece of, or another comment here. Um, it says, this is like Black Ops in Avatar. Somebody please explain. Um, okay, here, there's one last comment. 
Uh, it says, I always wanted to play Call of Duty Black Ops, but with Avatar characters, and this is what it would be like. I wonder so, if they realized that it would not be a different game. Probably, yeah, probably not. I think that this comment section is just like all Call of Duty. I think that there's some crossover with the uh, Call of Duty fans and <laughs> Avatar. Um, oh, that's good. I don't want to be affiliated with them. Yeah, so yeah, let's move They're on from the, the comments worst. and get into the next episode. And what is the name of the next episode, Caleb? The name of the next episode is The Fortune Teller. I really only asked because I didn't have it pulled up in front of me. <laughs> so The Fortune Teller, ladies and gentlemen, starts out, uh, starts out with them meeting a... It does start with him meeting a guy getting attacked by a platypus bear, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, it, this might actually be one of the first times we see the uh, the crossover animals. Well, I mean, yeah, well, they, because the, so, the name well, of the crossover animals because yes, we've but, had crossover animals before, have we? We had the we had the, the platypus, we've had Appa, and we've had Momo. Yeah, but I think Appa and Momo they're not. Well, yeah, but I they're guess, only I guess they're only called saying, flying bison. You're saying is the yeah yeah they're actually named two different animals. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I think that that's this is when they started like doing that. But uh, the platypus bear is gigantic, and he's fighting this guy, and this guy's just kind of dodging it. Like, he's got his hands in his robes. He's like this weird, like, monk, and he's kind of like, whoop. Yeah, it looks whoop, like he's practicing whoop. sort of a martial art because he's doing all these different moves. Um, and he's just dodging, and then Aang is telling him to, like, run in zigzags, and Sokka's like, hey, you have to, like, play dead. He'll just get, he'll just get uh, annoyed, and he'll leave. Uh-huh. Or bored. And then Katara's telling him how to do stuff, and then goes back to Sokka telling him how to do stuff. And Aang's like, no, you gotta do this. And he's like, no, I'm gonna be fine. It's okay. And, and then he's just moving out of the way. And then Aang jumps in, and he goes, all right, bear, stand down, or whatever he says. And the and bear then, screams right in his face. It just growls And then very Appa, Appa comes out of nowhere and lands behind the bear, a plot of spare, and roars. Yeah. And this is where you actually get to see how big Appa really is, because they draw his head to fill the whole screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is cell animation, right? They did okay. They draw his head to fill the whole screen, and then in the middle is what the platypus bear is—the size of like I don't know, like probably a Kodiak bear. Mm-hmm. It's and a it, large bear. It's a very large bear. A large platypus bear. and uh, a very large platypus bear with this big old tail that I don't think he ever uses. But uh, he stands there, and he kind of like, oh crap, and he kind of just turns around and gets back into the water and swims away. Mm-hmm. But uh, you actually see how big Appa really is. Yeah, and so the, yeah, then this guy is like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be on my way, and they're like, what are you doing? You were just almost killed, and he's like. No, I, I I knew I'd be fine. And they're like, "Why? How did you know that?" And then uh, they he come to find out there's a fortune teller in a nearby village who told him that uh, he was going to have a safe journey. And Sokka's like, "But you almost died." And he goes, "But I didn't." Yeah, he was safe, which I have beef with because he could have died if they wouldn't have come along path. Which yes is technically true, stating what the psychic said. But I think the psychic is just trying to fool these uh, these individuals just to have think, power over them. I think them. that you're uh, attributing uh, your outside influence. Into no, this world. she's she's basically like like a uh, like a priest from like a uh, uh, Egyptian. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Egyptian play like ancient Egyptian uh, nationality, where they're kind of like, hey, I can do all this cool stuff. Respect me. Like they don't use money or anything, but they use they have power. Like it's mental this mental power over mm-hmm. the individuals. So they're not getting really anything out of like money wise because she doesn't she doesn't charge anything but katara and Sokka, or not Sokka, but katara and anger curious about uh this fortune teller so they go to the village well yeah before that um just to cement sort of the the fortune teller aspect a little bit uh the guy tells uh the gang that oh, uh, yeah. madam Wu, i think it's her name Something i think it's madam Wu. um she is expecting them and they're like what are you what are you talking about and then he hands them he hands ang a parcel <laughs> and ang opens it up and it's an umbrella and he says oh this is pretty cool and it starts raining. Yeah, and uh, Katara, fortune teller confirmed. I hate it. Katara immediately water bends the uh, like her little her own little umbrella, which is yeah, cool. it's really cool. But I was telling I was telling Caleb, they, we're I, not going to get. I'm into not going to get into spe- like specifics. But uh, throughout the season, she becomes a very very powerful bender, mm-hmm. and uh, that's just she's like oh like all cutesy like doing the whole uh, umbrella, umbrella thing over her head, and then uh, after a while, she just becomes this boss of a water bender. Like that's. That's something she wouldn't even think about doing anymore. Uh-huh. Just walking through. She's like, oh, water, whatever, whatever. I got that. But uh, Aang did make her a necklace to uh, oh, yeah. fix that, uh, to replace the necklace that Zuko Because she didn't get the necklace back from Zuko. I think Zuko still has it, yeah. Zuko still got I it. I thought that she had taken it back, but I guess not. No, because in I think it's the season finale, this, or this uh, season actually, um, she actually gets it back from him. Okay. Um, when they're trapped in the ice caverns. Yes, yes, that's true. <sighs> Spoilers. Um, yeah, so they, they go and meet Madame Wu, and... Katara is very on board for the fortune telling. Sokka's not. I'm with Sokka. Team no. Sokka. And uh, Katara goes in there, <clears throat> excuse me, and learns that the uh, her the person that she's going to marry 
is a very powerful bender. And Aang overhears that because, as we know, and as it, it's like he said, uh, uh, as uh, it's cemented into this episode pretty much, that Aang has this massive crush on Katara. Oh, yeah. And you can see it at the very beginning when he uh, gives her the necklace and she goes, how do I look? And the camera turns around and we get a POV from uh, Aang, whatever uh, the word that you used earlier. The vignette. Vi- vignette. It's a, and, it's uh, per- pink around it yeah to uh, symbolize love and it starts out and the camera starts at the bottom and it goes all the way to her head and he's like oh all of you are just your neck and like he's really flustered and he, he thinks katara is the most beautiful one in the world and uh, so he wants he wants to you know date her or kiss her or do high school prom things but regardless <laughs> so they go to this uh, they go to this place and ang overhears her uh, say that and he's all proud and whatnot and he walks out because he is uh, the avatar he's the avatar the most powerful bender uh, right now Oh, will be when he gets all uh, all mastered. Hopefully. And so she, wa- Madame Wu walks out with Katara, and Sokka says, all right, let's get this over with. And she's like, yeah, you're going to have a terrible time with your life. <laughs> and most of it's going to be self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so he goes, what? How did you get that? And she goes, it's all written all over your face. Aang, <laughs> come on in. So Aang walks back there, and uh, some really cool, really cool, awesome stuff happens. Even though this, is ep- this episode, I think, t- personally, is a filler, we don't see the overarching story of mm-hmm. uh, Zuko chasing a- Aang. I keep wanting to say Anakin, man, chasing Aang through the uh, the forest or the the world, and uh, we don't see that a lot or at all in this episode. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a filler episode, but we had a little uh, beef with that. But uh, yeah, Aang goes in with Madame Wu, and she says that the most accurate way to get her fortune reading is by throwing a bone in the fire and then looking at the cracks that's made in the bone. And she throws this bone in the fire, and they're waiting for it to crack. And then there's a big crack in the middle, and Aang's like, "That's a that's big pretty, crack. That's pretty big crack." <laughs> and she's like. Yeah, it is. And then the bone explodes. And the fire reaches all the way to the ceiling. Yes. This huge column of fire. And she's like, oh. Uh, she's She gets all, like, the lighting goes all dramatic. And she's like. And she's astonished. She, it sort of reminds me of uh, Lord of the Rings when the, uh, the witch. I will be the most yes. powerful. <laughs> Lady and, Galadriel. And so, yeah, Galadriel. And um, she she sort of starts going like that. Like, you're going to be in the, uh, the uh, battle to decide the fate of the earth. And Aang's like. Yeah, I know that. Who am I going to marry? <laughs> Tell me something I don't know, like like women. She's like, oh, girls? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, I must have missed a thing. Uh, follow the, your heart pick or a broken some bone. fortune cookie stuff. Yeah, something ridiculous. And so they leave, and he's like, okay, whatever. And then uh, we we didn't mention the uh, the character. Is her name Wang or Wan? It's, no, it's May. May. Man, I was way off, wasn't I? A little bit. Well, her hair is insane. It's crazy. And she's like eight, and uh, she's in love with Ang. Yeah, it, it sort of does a similar sort of like vignette. Um, when she looks at him in a, a similar way as it did with Katara. And he's just sitting there scratching his nose like, what? Like, he, 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 he does, does not even notice her. Yeah, and she drops that uh, food in, her, in his lap for a second, and her uh, cheeks flush red, and he's just kind of sitting there like, all right. This okay, is, please leave. Get away from me. And uh, so they they go out, and they're uh, wandering around and whatnot, and... Uh, or the marketplace, and Aang is trying to flirt with Katara because he's trying to you know hook up with her because you know she's gonna marry the most powerful bender ever, him, so, him, <laughs> and so uh, he obviously has a huge crush on her, and he's like, uh, "Hey Katara, what's up?" And she's like, "Not now" or something like that, and she walks away. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, it's fine. I got I got my own stuff to do, Avatar stuff," and then he walks away, and uh, she goes uh, she goes back to Madame Wu, doesn't she? And yeah, talk, is that is that after they uh, do the cloud reading, or is that before? Uh, it's before, and she's like, she's really into this fortune teller stuff, and she's like, uh, what should I wear? Should I wear a scarf tomorrow? What should I eat? Should I eat a papaya or a mango? And she's like, uh, get a papaya, and then slams the door in her face, and she goes, oh, but I hate papaya. And uh-huh. that's when Aang is like, hey, Katara, what's up? And so she goes out, and she goes to buy a papaya, and he walks over with Momo on his chest, and he goes, so, uh, papayas, huh? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, and he goes, oh, yeah, I don't really like papayas, I eat whatever I want. Takes a bite out of something, she walks away, and he immediately throws it up. And she's like, yeah, see you later. And this leads into him seeing a couple where it's a, it's a what is it, dragonfly, panda fly, what is it? It's the red uh, flower. Yeah, I think they called it a panda lily. Panda lily, that's what yes. it is. But he sees this couple, um, she uh, she just gets a panda lily from her lover, and he's like, oh, hey, where'd you get one of those? And, uh, yeah, a little bit um, before that, they done they did the cloud reading, which is where Madame Wu mm-hmm. comes out to tell them uh, to look at the cloud and say, hey, this is what the clouds say. The village is going to be safe. The village is going to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. And she says it's a good year for twins. And she sees like a bendy which in- arrow. Which introduces us uh, two unique characters. Yeah. The twins. And uh, she sees like, I think it's like a bendy arrow or a crescent moon or something. It's a, She's it's like, the crescent moon is the twins. The straight arrow is something for crops. It's a good uh, year for crops. And yes. she goes, and a small lion cub with a crook tail. The lava will not burn the town down. Yeah, the, and they're like, the, yeah. The village will be safe this year. Yeah. 
And so, Aang, Aang, anyways, back to the... the so, yeah, Aang, forward, forward into that, actually. Aang and Sokka go on the quest to find the panda lily that Aang believes is going to make Katara love him. Yes, and then when they they off the top, at the top of the volcano, and when they get there, they find out that the volcano is very active. Yeah, it, it's, there's lava. It's everywhere. boiling lava, and it's coming up. So they immediately run back down. They're like, hey, you guys, uh, you I know that the fortune teller said that we're safe, but we should, like, deal with this lava because it's going to destroy the village. Now, in all honesty, if I was Aang or Sokka, I would not have done anything just to prove everybody wrong. I'd have been like, hey... You, but you couldn't have. I, I would have just been like, That listen, wasn't what was predicted. Listen, you guys are going to die. And they were like, no, we're not. I'm like, all right, whatever, you guys are going to die. And then I'd leave and they'd die. But that's because not that's who how Aang that works. is. He is the Avatar. Yeah, this is why I'm not the Avatar. That's why I'm just this dude recording a podcast right now. <laughs> just your so, basic dude. Yeah, so um, even uh, Katara, who had been... Um, on board with the whole fortune yeah, she's like, like listen up yeah i know that she said this and that's all fine and good but she can't always be right no so they they hatch a plan because the the townspeople are not listening to them they're gonna go get the book that uh madame Wu was reading out to read the clouds and form their own clouds with water bending and air bending to make it say that the lava is going to destroy the town and they they form a uh, very deadly looking skull and then uh, madame Wu sees it and like like oh no the lava will kill us. And so the Aang's like, all right, no need to panic. Let's act now. Anybody earthbenders, get over here. Let's dig a trench. Uh-huh. And, they, yeah, they dig this trench. And there's people with shovels, which <laughs> the earthbenders are, like, taking these big chunks out and, like, moving them around. The people with shovels are taking little bitty things and, like, even, flipping even dirt Even Momo out. carries a small rock. Yeah. I don't think that was necessary. I thought it was funny, though. Yeah. But uh, Aang's like, uh, anybody earthbenders? And one of the twins is like, I am, which would suck as a twin to not be the Yeah, because, yeah, there was another twin that was not an earthbender. Yeah, like, one of the twins was earthbenders and the other one wasn't, so that would be really sucky. That would be, that would be like uh, growing up as Jesus' brother and be like, why can't <laughs> you be more like Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's just a terrible situation. Uh, that reminds me of, uh, no, I'm not going to tell you about that because you're going to hate me if you're on a I, tangent. I do. Ah, can I talk about it anyways? No, you may not. Please. We'll talk about it after the podcast. Ah, but I don't want to tell you. No, okay, okay. so, yeah, they, they create this trench, and then, lo and behold... A very the, large trench. Yeah, the lava, or the mountain erupts and sends lava down. And it's filling up the trench pretty pretty quickly, and they fear that it's going to go over. And now, uh, man, it's very reminiscent of something you haven't seen yet, uh, Avatar Roku. Spoiler. Avatar, Avatar Roku's uh, little... little uh, run in with lava yeah but uh so you're like oh man Aang, be careful and uh then he, he ends up f- freezing all this because this lava comes out in the trench and they're like and katara's like it's too much it's gonna overflow and so Aang's like i got this and then goes up there and just it splashes up and he freezes this giant yeah, wall he, like, of he, lava he throws a uh like a wall of air up to sort of disperse the lava around and then it solidifies it off yeah and it, then it becomes the like a the rock or whatever and then there's soot flying down everywhere Obsidian. yeah there's soot flying down everywhere and uh, katara and, and Sokka are standing there and Sokka goes wow i never realized how much of a powerful bender he was and then uh katara goes when did you say nothing i just was talking about how powerful he is as a bender and, and then, then katara looks back at Aang, which would i think is a in a new light yeah like hey i'm gonna marry that guy and we're gonna have three children and one of them's gonna three be grandchildren, and I'm gonna die after the third grand or great grandchild. Grand great grandchild. <laughs> she's stupid old in Korra, though. Yeah. There's no great grandchildren at all. She's gonna live forever. Yeah, she's longer than Boomy. Yeah, I'm saying it. Probably. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's get into some trivia then. That's the end of the episode, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. That's that's how the episode ends with him saving the town. But then, well, there's uh, before we move on, there's a little bit of a debate. Uh, as to whether Madame Wu was right, because she did say that the the town would be safe from the lava. Yes, and all, it was. In all technicality, she was she was correct across the board, yes. but she did not know. She did not know. I want you to tell we can me. Clear that up. I want you to tell me a prediction that she made that did not come true. The papaya. She ate the papaya, but it doesn't mean she liked it. But that she didn't doesn't say she, that. Doesn't mean she should. That have wasn't it. really a prediction. That was Katara annoying the crap out of her. And she's like, "Go away! <laughs> Just get I don't want to give you any more predictions." But anyway, so it, technically she was right. Yeah, exactly. But regardless, fortune telling confirmed. Like I said, if I was Aang, I'd have been like, "Y'all are gonna die. I'm not gonna do anything to protect you." But see, that's that's maybe she didn't know what she was predicting. She said the town's gonna be safe, and the town ended up being safe. No, I hate her. So it's a, it's a, like predestination. Do we actually have any control in what happens? Daoism. Maybe. That is Daoism, isn't it? I don't know. It's There's a lot of, uh, pre- Everything happens of for Christians reason. that uh, believe in predestination. Yeah. I think it's a major theme. If we talked about religion, we would talk about it for like an hour. Yeah. My religious debates get very deep. Anyways, 
So uh, Sokka ends up uh, talking to one of the guys after he says something about Madame Wu being the best. Oh, yeah, because the, the townspeople are like, yeah, Madame Wu is Madame still Wu's right. Madame Wu is awesome. And then Sokka's like, I hate you. And I'm on board <laughs> with Sokka all the way. Now, see, I agree with the townspeople. Anyways, so let's, let's get us into some trivia now. What do you got for us, Caleb? Okay. So the uh, the first piece of trivia we have is uh, Avatar, or Avatar, Aang and Katara. Well, Avatar are seen, Aang. So yes, uh, right. yeah. Shut your mouth. Read the trivia, Per. Uh, Aang and Katara are seen sharing an umbrella in this episode. Sharing an umbrella is an old romantic motif. A, what? A.A. Gasa is in quotes in Japanese history. I guess that's what it's called. I don't know what that means. It's commonly used in manga and anime. Oh. I think it's I think it's manga and anime. <laughs> anime. That's how you pronounce it. Anime. Manga and anime. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the the volcano in this episode is called Mount Makapu, meaning bulging eye in Hawaiian. Makapu'u is a name given to extreme eastern end of island of Oahu in the I- Hawaiian Islands. Your pronunciation skills are phenomenal. <laughs> uh, I'm actually from Hawaii. Ha- Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's so disrespectful to anyone. No, from I've just Hawaii watched a lot of Hawaii Five O. Uh, I've seen Moana like ten times. Yeah. Come on, I'm, I'm practically Hawaiian myself. Um, okay, in in ancient China, next piece of trivia: osteomancy, a type of pyromancy, osteoporosis. Uh, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Something to do with bones. Uh, was practiced in the Neolithic period and oh, Shang like, and is... Zhao dynasties in the form of burning and heating oracle bones. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Yeah, usually the scapulae, shoulder blades. Uh, oh, okay, not of humans, of oxen or <laughs> turtle shells, uh, to produce cracks which were read as portents. We murder humans just to tell the future. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I guess that this would be um, close to, in like Roman times, um, augers, which would open up uh, animals and read their innards. Wow, that's so... Metal. Uh, <laughs> that's this, so metal, bro. This is what uh, Aunt Wu used to see the future. See, it actually confirms in this piece of trivia that she can see the future. No, she can't see the future. Uh, Katara t- reveals in this episode that she hates papayas. Papaya. 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 That, that reminds me of um, papaya. Oh, papaya. What is that from? It's from Sahara. Uh, oh, Sahara? Yeah, Sahara. Uh, Solid it, movie, Matthew McConaughey, Steve Zahn. It's a great movie. Uh, they go into the uh, the uh, Tuareg camp, and the, the music in the background is... Oh, po, po, Why do you remember oh, po, po, that? Po, po, I, Harley, I've seen that movie a thousand times. Well, I've seen it like 999 times, but it doesn't mean, you know, I guess it's that one more time that I need to watch it. Too. Okay, next piece of trivia. <laughs> uh, the, why don't, hey, Caleb, why don't you save that for your Sahara podcast? Yeah, Caleb. Which is coming in uh, early 2018. Um, the statues seen being burned by the lava flow bear. La, la, oh, <laughs> there's no comma. <laughs> or there shouldn't be a comma, but the statues seen burned by the lava flow bear resemblance to real-life statues called Daruma, which is commonly used in Japan- Japanese Shinto shrines. What's a Shinto shrine? Uh, I don't know. Also, I guess I missed the statues. Yeah, uh, I don't think that it was actually there. Well, wait. No, it was the... Uh, like, they sort of look like gravestones with faces on them. You remember that? I guess I... I'd... Because I, br- I brought up, I was like, that's not what would happen if lava would hit, like, a stone, because it takes down that, like, the gateway. Okay, okay. And then there's those things in front of it. That was a lot of lava. Yeah. I'd be terrified. It was like, um, it was like Pompoy, Pompoy. <laughs> it's like Pompoy point five. Uh, uh, okay, so this next piece of trivia is definitely shown that even with identical twins, one can be born a bender while the other is not. Of course, this would not apply to air nomad twins who would always be born as airbenders. Why is that? So I, no, well, I guess that just airbenders are always born as airbenders. What's, what's the chromosomal difference? I mean, I guess I in know. Korra, all all Tenzin's children are airbenders. Yeah. They oh. are descendant of the Avatar. Well, no, they're not, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, all Tenzin's children are. All Tenzin's children. Yes. But, see, that's weird. Well, I guess I guess if you... Jinora Iki and that other one. I always forget her name. Yes, Middle but um, all of Aang and Katara's children are not benders, right? Uh, I don't believe so. I guess you're... Oh man, how does that work? I guess it might be if two airbenders have a kid, then they're always born as an airbender. But Tins... Maybe it's... No, maybe it's because uh, they're two benders. Maybe because Tenzin didn't marry a bender. He married a uh, just regular civilian. 
So maybe that. Uh, I have no clue what any. Uh, maybe all this lore that we're reading right now does not apply to. Cora. No, I'm I'm I'm, t- I'm I'm confused right now because I want to talk about it because Tins and Marys, uh, whatever her name is, I can't remember what her name is, but she's just a regular civilian. She's not a bender, so yes. maybe he has the dominant uh, dominant DNA right there, and so he passes on all his uh, powers to his children. I guess you know as much about genetics as I do, but <laughs> you probably know more. But <laughs> Katara, but Katara and Aang are both benders. So that's why one of their kids is a waterbender, one of them is an airbender, and the other one's not a bender that's at true. all. I so. guess that the probability would state that as such. Yeah. Um, Two dominant forces trying to collide. Okay, so this this next piece of trivia is a little bit odd. The title card of this episode remains on screen for less time than any other episode title in the entire series. Maybe the episode itself is longer. Maybe. But is it that much longer? They, maybe they had, this, had maybe to, they had to show like where one they, segment. That's where they had to pull the time out of the episode was the title card. <laughs> they they pulled it in for there for that for that goose that goose scene. Yeah, where Tara walks yeah. over, and the goose walks by, and he goes. They could have cut the goose scene out. That didn't make any sense to the episode. <laughs> it was just funny to me. If you're a child, oh, it wasn't funny. You're oh. right. So. What's up? This is an interesting piece of trivia. Jesse Flower, the Jesse's voice, girl, the voice of Meng, the the one who has a crush yes. on Aang. Would later join the main cast as Toph Beifong. Yeah, Toph. I did not even recognize the voice. <laughs> Neither did I. Um, okay, I, so, I guess thinking about it now, it's yeah, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. Thinking back, it's uh, you could you could definitely tell. That's cool. Toph's the best. Sakura um, Sakura's the best. Okay, and our our last piece of trivia, which uh, when Sokka kicks a pebble and it bounces off a nearby sign, hitting him in the head, the Chinese character on the sign ironically reads. And then the, the Chinese symbol, which roughly means a good blessing, which is a dumb sign to hang up. What is that <laughs> a sign? Uh, well, people will hang up a lot of stuff in their homes, like, you know, welcome. But here, if this is out in the family. open. Do you, Have you been to any white suburban home ever? Uh, maybe on, like, a mat. That's fair. People put out their names in the front okay, yard. But, okay, yeah, even... I guess this is, this this is more is of an a, Asiatic place, so I don't know in, they do that. This is in uh, the 2000s, okay? That's true. Where we have machines... That can mass produce things like that. What would you What would you date this uh, show at the eighteen hundreds? Late eighteen um, hundreds? Because eighteen hundreds? Cora is early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah, I guess this would have been. And that was like they they wasted like was it thirty years difference between the two of them? Was it the the nineteenth century? So yeah, I guess the eighteen hundred. I guess I don't I don't know exactly. Not a lot it feels of it feels. Um, I think it's the turn of the century. Probably, yeah. Because I think Aang was seventy or something when he died, right? Oh, it just saddens me that he dies. I don't know. Katara's still kicking the that old hag. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Katara, but uh, not not in love with her. Get that out of your heads, you sickos. But that she's a great character, and I love yeah, how she's the course. only character that goes over. Well, I guess and Toph it, um, bleeds over into Korra. Let's not spoil Korra. I love Korra. You tell I me we're not. We see we're not going to talk about it. Um, we have okay. 20 more episodes after this show. Yeah, so that's just going to about wrap it up for this episode oh, of uh, oh, The Boys in the Iceberg. Uh, I feel like we, we did a good job with the episode today. Yeah, don't high-five me. Put your hand down. Um, you got to high-five me gonna, if I put my hand up in the air. You. Please, just put, do it. Put it down. I Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um <laughs> Okay, yeah, so that, that wraps it up. Uh, Harley, it was great having you back on. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, sir. I'll be here next week, hopefully, if uh, I don't die. Yeah, hopefully. He he might be having a little bit of a heart attack right now, but that's nothing. It's been, it's been like a 45-minute heart attack. I'll, I'll tough it out. Yeah, okay, so uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if you want to check us out on Twitter, we're at Boys in the Berg. If you'd like to uh, get in touch with us at email, you can uh, send us questions that we'll address on the air at the Boys in the Iceberg, or rather, Boys in the Iceberg at gmail.com and uh, check us out on iTunes uh, rate and subscribe that would be a, a, a boon to this podcast <laughs> uh, very big help again thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week bye bye